The Bible is full of promises. And the Bible says through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. Today, I want to talk about seven promises that we can count on. Hi, this is Robert Furrow, and welcome to Hot Topics. If you're new here, consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and ringing the bell so you can get all of our new content. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. Before we take a look at these seven promises that we can count on, I want to talk a little bit about promises because sometimes they can be misused. Sometimes a promise is to one person and somebody tries to take it for someone else. Sometimes there are conditional promises that we have to keep the condition in order to be able to get the promise. Let me give you an example of a promise that is given to someone else that people try to take for themselves. Jesus had told the disciples when he calmed the storm, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. And so then in the middle of it, Jesus calms the storm and people will say, well, Jesus will always calm your storm. Well, that's not true. Storms and difficulties come into our lives. He had specifically told them, get in the boat. We're going to go to the other side. No matter what, they were going to go to the other side. There are also misused promises. Things that people claim are promises that were never promises. Like in the book of 3 John, when John writes to his friend Gaius, he says, to my beloved Gaius, above all things, I would that you would prosper and be in good health. Well, people will quote that and say, God wants you to never be sick and wants you to prosper because he says in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, above all things, God wants you to prosper and be in good health. That's a misquote. God didn't say that. It was John writing to his friend that he wished that he would prosper and be in good health. It'd be like me saying to you, I hope things are going really well with you. So they take it out of context and they misuse it. There's no need to do that. The promises of God are so rich and so varied and so powerful. And then there's conditions on promises. And as we make our way through these seven, we're going to see that there are conditions on almost all of them. The first promise helps us when we make a mistake, when we stumble or when we sin and we ask God for forgiveness. Sometimes we can feel like because there's a failure in our lives that God no longer wants to use us. But listen to what the Bible says in Psalms 37:23 The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. So there's the condition. You're a good man because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you delight in his ways. Though he falls, it says, he shall not utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. That even though we stumble, even though we make mistakes, even though we fall, I love the other passage that says the righteous man stumbles seven times but gets up eight. We continue to get up even though we might stumble and fall. The second promise is for those who are feeling downcast, who feel like they can't take anymore, who are just wore out. Listen to what Jesus said, and here's the condition. Come unto me. Are you depressed? Are you feel like you can't take it anymore? You're just at the, at the end of your rope? Then come to Jesus. Come unto me, he says, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What an incredible promise. The Bible says that God will not break a bruised reed or put out a smoldering flax. Jesus said in the fulfillment of the Messiah passage that he was near those who are brokenhearted. If you're down and lowly and just feel like you can't take any more, then come unto Jesus. What an incredible promise. This next promise helps those who feel like they've waited and waited and waited and can't wait anymore. It says in Isaiah 40, 31, but those who wait on the Lord, it's not just waiting for something to happen, but they're actually waiting on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What an incredible promise when we're just waiting to see what God's going to do, that if we wait on him, putting our hope in him, he's going to strengthen us. This next promise is for all of us. Because all of us can be anxious, all of us worry, all of us can wake up in the middle of the night and think about a conversation that we've got to have with someone or worry about our kids or the people around us. And so Philippians 4, 6, and 7 say, be anxious for nothing. 
but everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. What an incredible promise. Let me go through this. Be anxious for nothing. That's easier said than done. So he says, but in everything by prayer. So pray about everything. If you wake up anxious, pray about it. And supplication with thanksgiving, thanking God for all of the things that he has done in your life. And then it says, let your request be made known to God. Let him hear it, cry out to him. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. The fifth passage is for those who need to make decisions or those that are looking for direction in their life. You've got decisions to make about life and you wanna make them prayerfully, but you don't know. Maybe it's what town you live in, what college you go to, whether you should ask this person to marry you. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verses five and six. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now that is a conditional promise as well. Three things you're supposed to do. Trust God with all of your heart. Say, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. You have my best in mind. Lean not on your own understanding. This means that you're not just going to lean on what you know, but you trust and believe that God knows better and that he knows best and that he's got knowledge of all truth. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge God in the ways and the decisions that you make. And then it says, and he will direct your path. What a great promise that we know will be directed by God. And if we begin to go down the wrong path, God will redirect us and take us down the proper one. The sixth promise is an incredible promise and it's used often. And it's for those that are going through difficult and hard times, maybe even the unspeakable. Things have just gone the wrong way. You've gone down a road you would never choose to go down. And here's the promise that God gives us in Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It doesn't say, and we know that all things are good, but that God is able to work all things towards our good. This is a verse that's good to hear and to study and to understand before you're in the midst of it. It's not one to pull out when someone's going down a difficult time, unless the Holy Spirit leads you to share it. Sometimes someone's going through a very hard time and you say, well, all things work together for the good. Don't worry about it. This is a promise to encourage us that no matter what's taking place in our lives, God is working it out if we indeed love him. And that's the condition to that promise. The seventh and final promise is for those who are feeling cold and distant from God. And God gives us this, that we would know that if we make an effort to move towards him, he's going to move towards us. It's James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's saying that if you say, I want to get closer to God and you begin to move forward, that God will respond and draw near to you. And listen to what it goes on to say. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So that if there's sin in our lives, if we're doing something we shouldn't be doing, that we would cleanse our hands from it by asking him to forgive us. That we would make sure that we say, Lord, I don't want to do this. I need your help. God knows the struggle that we have with sin. God knows that we have a sin nature. He knows that we are so easily entangled in it. And sometimes we feel like we have to admit that we're so bad if we admit that we have sin in our lives. When we're just admitting that we're, we're who we are. And when we cleanse our hands and when we purify our hearts because we are double-minded, we're saying, Lord, I wanna give everything to you. And when we do that, the Bible says, God will draw near to us what incredible promises. And let me just encourage you in one more thing, and that is that you would memorize these. Maybe take these seven promises, make sure you have them memorized because the Holy Spirit will bring them back to you in a time of need. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.